<laughs> Change it. <laughs> Good morning. Revelations chapter 2. You've been here before, right? So we're going to revisit that. So one of the scriptures that stands out to me in this whole chapter, uh, and you'll hear it repeated multiple times, um, is it says, "He that hath an ear, right, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches." So chapter 2, right, is dedicated to a handful of the seven churches, right, that Revelation begins talking about. This is the easy part, right? So you ever hear me say, put your seatbelt on? This is easy, right? So it's going to get a lot more uh, interesting as we go uh, beyond this point. I don't know, uh, Justin, if you ever find that picture I had last week, throw it up there. We'll use it as a... A reminder uh, quickly so let me give you a quick reminder about what the first few chapters of Revelation is about right second chapter John's talking to four of the seven churches right that are in the surrounding area I say in his neighborhood right but remember John is oh I didn't see it yet did you find it Have to kick, have to crank it. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's not the right one, but it's close. <laughs> same bit, same picture, right? Okay, remember John's over here uh, in this island of, uh, what do you call it? It's the island of Patmos, right? On the left. And he's writing this, okay? Now, uh, they say, I don't know, and I can't tell from Scripture. I read some s material, and I, I, I forgive me for that. They say John wasn't, he really wasn't there that long, right? I thought someone, someone said maybe a couple of years or so. It wasn't as if he was there for, you know, 50 years. Or he, he wouldn't have got much preaching done, would he? So, but he was over here in Patmos, and he got put over there by who? The emperor of Rome, right? For what? Open his mouth, preach it, give him his testimony, right? Well, uh, while he's there, he's writing to these seven churches that we see, these uh, other red dots, starting at Ephesus. And I think I mentioned last week, he begins kind of working in like uh, clockwise order, okay? So, we first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about Ephesus, right? Then he's going to go on to Smyrna. Pergamon and Thyatira. That's as far as this lesson gets today. And so there's just a little bit about each one we're going to talk about. Now, why why do you care? Why do we care? You know, I mean, it's been so long ago, and seven or eight of these cities are in ruins, right? They don't even exist anymore. So why do we care about what the Lord has to say to these churches? I mean, just look at our world today, right? When we go through these, you'll see. I mean, it's like, oh, oh. You know, it's like, it almost reminds me of what I heard on the news last week, right? So, realistically speaking, this is important stuff, or it wouldn't have been written down. It wouldn't have been uh, put in the scriptures for us to meditate and read upon, okay? Now, if this is not important to you at this point in time, just hang on. One of these will probably hit home. Right to something that you've either witnessed or felt or heard or or been uh, bothered by. All of chapter two starts in my Bible in red. I don't know what your Bible is. I have a red letter edition, right? So it basically says, "When it's Jesus talking, it's red." Right, red letter edition, and that's where we're going to begin today. So Paul begins by talking to the church at Ephesus. Okay, now Ephesus. The first one, bottom left, this is where John was. Did I say Paul again? 
I meant John if I did. Okay, so we're talking about John, St. John. I got to tell you this, too, before I get started. I just, I was doing, just, uh, forgive me. I was Googling, you know, around, saying what, what they got to say about um, uh, Patmos. And, you know, lo and behold, the first thing I saw someone say isn't the same John. It's not St. John. It's not the same John that wrote John 1, 2, 3. It's a totally different John. So be careful. Remember, we've been talking about false teachers, false prophets. Easy. One click. Led me right there. I mean, it could have been a, be careful. This is St. John. This is John, the author of John, first one, two, and three, and Revelation. This is John the Revelator, John the St. John, John one, two, three, okay? Just a warning, um, if you're ever that. Well, I'd say there's so, yeah, he's out there. Did he give him a fishing pole, you know, or something to catch fish with? Um, I'm assuming it is. Um, I think that the, from what I read, um, it was, you know, first of all, if you look back on Roman history, they, they're, they're actually a pretty mean people. Yeah. They, uh, uh, you know, their uh, crucifixions, executions, punishments, et cetera. You know, they weren't like, you know, pat on the back, sit in the corner and give you a timeout. It wasn't like that, right? So when uh, you became a problem or you got in the way, they put you somewhere where you wouldn't be in the way. Some, I guess some, sometimes they just cut your head off, right, if you wanted to. But in this, John's case, he did, right? He just, but what we have, yeah. 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 There's there's several around there, and and I got. I mean, if you look at the the map, you know, and you're really into that, um, and I probably should have shown you a better map. But you know, realistically speaking, in um, this part of the world, at this particular part point of time, Rome was in charge, the Roman Empire. Okay. So all this we can see is under Roman control. Okay, this we call um, this area we're calling Asia Minor, right? Um, or uh, even I think, if I'm not mistaken, partly sort of Macedonia, right? Maybe when you, you get into Paul's writings. But let's think about what it means to be um, in conflict with the Roman Empire. Okay, so what happens is in Rome, it became very important to worship the empire, right? Imperial worship, imperial gods, right? Imperial, and then meaning the, the guy who's leading the country, you know, he was, you know, if not God. Yeah, okay. So don't forget that John's teachings, you know, overrode the imperial view, right, of control, right? It was all about God and Christ, right? And so that was contrary. And, you know, that was not a whole lot unlike uh, or changed much even from when Christ was alive, right? So why are we? Yeah. <gasps> well, actually, here's the deal. Remember Jerusalem, right? This is around, um, well, okay, we talked about this around A.D. 75. No, excuse me, A.D. 90, okay? Meaning what? Approximately 90-some years after the birth of Christ, okay? Christ died at 33, right? So it's, what's that? Yeah, 67 more years later, right? Now, don't forget, in A.D. 70, what happened? A.D. 70, Rome destroyed Jerusalem's temple. This is where it was. What happened to the Jews? Everywhere. 
I worked with a girl. Uh, I've worked with uh, several. One girl I worked with. She's she's. Uh, I met her, and then, you know, she was from Russia. Her whole family. They came over here. You know, when they kicked the doors, the walls down, they were out of there. Right. She come over here, and um, I got talking to her, and she was Jewish. I said, "Oh, I thought you were Russian." You know, <laughs> kidding. But she was. Her family were one of those years back. You know, she does. Obviously, by this time, they're, you know, don't forget, in Russia, being a Jew is almost as bad as being a Jew in Germany, right? It's not necessarily uh, um, anything to be proud of over there. But, yeah, they were part of the, what, dispersion, right, of the Jews across the world, right? So don't be surprised. Now, obviously, you remember when we read about Paul, right, and his ministry, which was even earlier than this. Okay, you know, Paul did the track all the way over to Rome, remember? Was this over here, is, this is Greece, over here. Gr this area of the world is very much into, how can I say this? Um, very much into idolatry. Okay, so let me try to uh, help you. Idol worship. When I was in school, I thought it was kind of cool then because I didn't know the difference. I mean, that we listen, I'm 55, so I probably go back uh, eight years old, right? How many years is that? Come on, Jim. 47 years, right? <laughs> we learned about the Greek gods, Zeus. Remember, Zeus was the great Greek god. And then Zeus had and even his challenges, right? But he had his daughters and his brothers and nephews and uncles and they all had names and they all had a purpose right and this whole country from here is just polluted by that okay by different temples that they build for different greek gods and goddesses you know of different purposes god of the god of fertility the god of hunting the god of wilderness the god of uh gosh i can just go on Sorry, I don't have them all memorized. Back then in school, it was kind of cool because it was kind of like a cartoon, right? You read, it's a reading class. You read these stories. Nothing spiritual about it. But you know what? It was a real thing. It was real in this part of the world at this point in time. And to counter that, you, were, you talk about being a minority, you were a minority. You talk about persecution, you were persecuted, okay? So you weren't uh, the best-looking church on the corner of Centerburg, right? You were very, very humble, very quiet, very, you know, unless you're, you know, John, right? And these seven churches are very important to the ministry that is going on. So what John's going to do here, he's going to say, all right, guys, gals, you're doing a really good job, but here's where you need to step it up, all right? And they all have different messages, right? They all have different challenges, right, in that part of the world for various reasons because where they, where they exist, are they close to the ocean, right? Are they close to a seaport? Are they, are they close to a commercial pathway? I'm boring you, right? But take that for uh, all seriousness, right? These churches are on a road, the Roman road. We've heard the Roman. We talk about the Roman road to what? Salvation. This is just a road to get to these churches, right? So apparently, you know, from Ephesus to Smyrna is 40 or 50 miles. From Smyrna to Pergamon is another 40 or 50 miles. And then the other one's another 40, 50 miles. They're actually pretty close. But, you know, don't forget we're not driving um, fast cars these days, right? Yeah, just being that far apart is that easy to be um, even impacted differently and have different cultures, different gods, goddesses, all those things, okay? I'm just preparing you. This is easy scripture. He's just going to talk to each one, and we'll talk about it, okay? And he said leave time for you guys. We're going to have lots of questions or lots of feedback, so I'm going to hurry. Okay. All right. So Ephesus was kind of the mother church, right? It's kind of like 
I don't know, everybody kind of looked, maybe they looked at him for some guidance or some leadership or something of that nature. But this is pretty much where uh, John lived at the time before he went to Patmos. And after he left Patmos, that's where he ended up, right after the guy from Rome died. Okay? Uh huh. And, and, you know, we hear about Ephesus a lot. Okay? So, all right, let me begin reading. Chapter 2, verse 1. Now that you're all social studies experts, right? Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. Right. What's an angel? It's a messenger, right? Putting this out there, right? I don't know. Remember we talked, we said, we don't know who this is. Are these like, are these, pa are these like pastors? Are they people? Are they the spirit? Right? Of the church, okay? Don't get lost in that. That it's definitely someone he knows is going to receive this message and get the word to the church. So unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? He says, These things saith he. This is all in red. This is Jesus Christ talking. This is rumor. These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, semicolon. Okay, last week we talked about what? Somebody, John's out there catching night crawlers or fishing, right? Some big voice, loud as a trumpet, behind him speaks. He turns and sees what? Seven golden candlesticks or lamps. Candle lamps, but they're not necessarily candles. I... But imagine seven surrounding an individual, a well, an entity, right, a, a, a divinity, right. Each of those representing one of the churches, the seven churches. In the midst of those was who? Jesus. In his right hand, what did he have? Seven stars. One representing what? Each church. Easy. This is a vision. Okay, don't get overwhelmed yet. We got a couple weeks out before we have to do that. Seven stars is right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Okay. I know, this Christ says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Wow, what a what a great compliment. Come from Christ. That's a lot better than say. Thou hast tried them, which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars. So what are they doing? They're doing a, they're they're a pretty they're doing a pretty good job of filtering out the uh, right. Yeah, there you go. Wolves of sheep's clothing. He says, and has borne and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. So, way to go. Nevertheless, right, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Okay. Thy first love. What's the first love? All starts there. Salvation. Bingo. All right? It's that former devotion to Christ when you're, when you're saved. I'm going to tell you about Jesus. I'm going to tell you about Jesus. I can't, get, I can't get from here to the gas station without telling somebody about Jesus. Has that changed? It's changed. 
I mean, who's guilty? I think we're all guilty. Right. So the scripture is, I, I don't want to bore you. I remember. I remember. Second grade. I remember. I remember going to the altar. I remember sitting in the pastor's office. I'm eight years old. Make sure I was on. I wasn't just doing this for, for fun. I remember being baptized. I remember getting my picture made in second grade with a necklace on. It said, Jesus saved me. When I got in high school, if you wore a necklace and you were a boy, we'd take you out back. I don't know how many kids saw Jesus in me. Maybe a teacher did. And then they sent me to the office, right, with a pink card or whatever. However, there was a change. There was a change in all of our lives at that point, right? That is the first love. And what happens to all of us, right? Okay. Let me move on. And don't don't hesitate to, to interrupt. Okay. I'm on verse uh, 5. It says, remember, number one. Step one. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. Step two. And do the first works. Or else I will come Unto thee quickly, I will move thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. These candlesticks, all seven. Remember where you came from and repent. Return to me. Or what? I will move you. Verse 6, but this thou hast, and thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. The Nicolaitans, anybody know what the Nicolaitans are or do? I did not have a clue. I mean, so, so they claim to be Christians, right? I'm not their judge, right? But in the old days, or Roman, oh, you talk about Henri, but the Greeks, no better. They had this ritual, right, or this ritual of celebration, right? Their homecoming dinner, right? But through Christ, they had freedom, right, to do whatever. And in their case, it was often, you know, sexually oriented, right? You hear Mark use the word of orgy. I don't want to paint this black, but I'm telling you, in this world, bad place. Some of the kings would give their wives up for uh, someone else. You want to marry her? Yeah, go ahead and marry her. A ritual. Very, and the Nicolaitans were very, very um, impacted by that, right? These were the Nicolaitans. He points them out, says, But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans. He says, Which I also hate. This is Christ. He says, I also hate. He says, he that hath an ear, here we go, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Now, that may sound like, wow, you know, that's very romantic and dramatic and sounds good. Tell them about paradise. Right? What are you doing there? Are you, are you trying to encourage the member of the people that you were talking to that you served? Yeah. Encourage them to take up the same situation that you had the moment you were saved. Take 
Do you ever sit here and, and you hear the, the sermon and your heart just bubbles? It's like, when I get out of here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go over here at the shell. I'm going to get me a fountain pop. And before I leave there, I'm going to tell that person at the, old, at the desk, I'm saying, you've been to church. Doesn't that go through our minds, our hearts? All. Oh, what happens? Between here and there, Angela does something. Makes me mad. I get in there. No excuse. Absolutely. Actually, the mind of Christ, the fellow wants to take the mind of Christ, we, we shouldn't get this story. We should realize that they're going to not like us just like they didn't like Christ. Amen. Christ told them what they needed to do, and they didn't like it. Amen. That's the same way they do us, and we shouldn't get discouraged, but we do. And it's just one of them things that we do, but we don't. We're not taught that or practice that, I don't believe, in our youth as a Christian. Like they did the first Christian teaching. You, you're right. Youth, I need it now. It's almost like I need to, I, I, I wish someone would just like take me out of here and say, here's how you do it. Here's how you do it. Do it. And sit there in the car. Say, go for it. Do it. I'm not letting you go home until you do it. And all of a sudden, I do it. Mm. I felt good. Next time's a little easier. Next time's a little easier. Guess what? I mean, it ain't about me. It's about him. That's what I want. Remember that, because that's all we're going to do today on Ephesus, right? Yeah. Go ahead, bud. You get what I mean yes. Christ? Yeah. Christ wasn't discouraged for preaching to everybody, telling everybody what to do and everything. He was, even though he was the Son of God, and the things don't bother him, didn't bother him like they do us, and we don't think, but it does. And it bothered him just as much as as it does us. Broke his heart. But he never let us keep him from doing God's work. That's great. <laughs> how many times has that guy spent? How many hours has that guy spent in jail? Locks and chains and whipped and for what? Oh, I was just out preaching. I was just tell him about Jesus. Tell him that they better get their heart right, or you know. They'll get their candle, their candlestick taken away, right? <laughs> I'll fix you. But what was it for him to pick up the cross and go again? What caused him to do that? He was a prisoner of Christ. Yeah. He was, he was, he was, all, he was all in. With everything he had, he was devoted to Christ. Christ came first, no matter what. Amen. No creek came out of long stone for his life. But that's hard. How far you can go into the water. Can you ladies hear anything back there, Joan? All this good spiritual talk? If you can't, 
I can repeat some of it. It's not as good. It's great. Okay, let's move on to Smyrna, the next town up the road. Okay? Okay, and unto the angel, I'm in verse 8. Unto the angel of these, excuse me, unto the angel of the church in Smyrna. I'm assuming that's how he said it. Right. So these things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. It's Christ talking about himself, right? Remember, this is Jesus talking. The first and the last. I was dead. I'm alive. Is he? Today? He's alive, right? He was dead, now he's alive. He says, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. In some quote. I know it, but thou art rich. Where are your riches today? In heaven, right? And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. So Smyrna was the church under persecution, right? They say in the Sunday lesson we pointed out here, right? So it's probably, we were talking a little bit about emperor worship, etc. It seemed to be uh, pretty significant, more significant there than any of the other churches. Right? So, anyway, these Jews they're referring to, he's talking about unbelieving Jews, right? It, he's, not, I mean, he's not just throwing out their laws. He's talking about the unbelievers. And he's referring to the Jews here in this particular case, right? So, he's saying, I know the blasphemy of them. Blasphemy what? What is blasphemy? Yeah. It's a denial, right? What's the one sin that's going to send you to hell right now? Blasphemy of the Holy Ghost. I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan, right? So they're just hanging out, right? But the emperor makes the call, right? Let me continue. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. No, duh. All right? John's over here on the rocky banks of the Patmos, town of Pat, the, the what, island of Patmos. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into the prison, and ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death. And I will give you, give thee, what? A crown of life. Where? Not here. Of all you may suffer here for Christ. The crown of life is not here. Right? Not that there aren't blessings to receive. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Semicolon. It says, He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. What's the second death? Hell. He that overcometh. There you go. You're going to die once, unless the Lord comes back first. If you die the second death, you will live eternally in hell. Not where I want to be. Okay? Now, 10 days, tough. 
when I read it, I just want to say, you know, it's like, what, what, did, what did Christ mean when he said 10 days? I mean, 10 days, right? But there is some symbol, symbolic uh, language here, right? Well, the Roman law. Yeah, yeah. They give you 10 days to prove to be true. The Jew of their creeds were something. They gave you 10, ten days to prove that you weren't what they accused you to be. And if you don't bear out, then they put you to death. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's good. Did you guys hear that? Roman law. You want to repeat that? The 10 days? The 10 days was if you were accused of doing something against the government, against Rome, against the people. Yeah. He was accused of that. They said, let's give you 10 days to prove that you didn't do what they accused you of doing. If you couldn't prove it, then... I want your candle stick. That's really good. Because I couldn't make, I, I, I couldn't make that conclusion. I didn't know that. Um, okay. So, let's move on. I was thinking, is there anything else here to share with you about Smyrna? Pretty, pretty straightforward, right? Simple. You're just another church. Just the other one just over at the center bird. Now we're going to talk about Pergamus, okay? All right, now Pergamus is, was the capital of the Roman, uh, what would you say, this part of Asia. Pergamus was, you know, not as, um, uh, you know, not, not as big, not as uh, fancy, not as, you know, uh, what would I say? It, it's not as if you looked at it. A few years ago, they used to say, I don't know this. You used to say that Chillicothe was the capital of Ohio, the capital city of Ohio, right? Now, when I when I moved here, uh, even then, you know, Chillicothe was just what it is today. You know, yeah, it's little. But now it's got the Columbus. Went, oh, what happened? You know, Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, anyway, I said, how did Chillicothe ever be the cap? Well, in other words, this is a sort of example, right? Uh, just to give you uh, the idea about Pergamos, right? A little bit about it. They call it Satan's seat, right? And uh, let's talk about it. And the angel of the church, right, and to the angel of the church in Pergamos, right? Yeah. Can you see the third dot? Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum. Sailors? <laughs> You're right. To the angel of the church in Pergamus writes, says, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. Now we talked about this last week. What's that? Two edged sword. The Bible, the mouth, the tongue, the word, Jesus Christ, it cuts in, <laughs> cuts out, right? Not just one hole. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is, and thou holdest fast my name. And thou hast not denied my faith. Even in those days where in, where in Antip Antipas, I don't know uh, much about this guy, where in Antipas was my faithful martyr. So what's a martyr, right? Someone they give, they give their life. I'm, I'm, give their life for this purpose. Doesn't mean I was resurrected, but I might give my life for that cause, right? Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee. This is Christ. He starts by what? Bringing him up. Encouraging him. But, Jim said, I have a few things against thee. Right? Because thou hast... Where's Judy? I love this. I was thinking about you when I read this. Because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of... 
Balaam. Imagine that, Judy. It's already in the last book. Remember Balaam? Yeah. Do you guys remember Balaam? I'll tell you more about it. Who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. Roll back the clock. There was this guy named Balaam. He was his, sort of his own prophet, right? He kind of things he liked to say. He, he sort of overwhelmed people that things were going to happen, and he was just a pool of hot air, right? But he had convinced the king of Moab that he knew how to get at these Israelites. This is the Israelites before they crossed over the Jordan River. And a lot of it had to do with idolatry, fornication, sexual, you know, distractions, right? I'm talking all the things that we've been discussing, evil, right? And, uh, oh, uh, remember Balaam, he, he got on his donkey, went down the road, and an angel stepped out in front of him, right? Blocked him. That donkey went around, the angel stepped out again, blocked him again, <laughs> You know, Balaam starts kicking that mule, donkey, whatever the heck it was, and it talked to him. Balaam has a history, right? Um, so he's referred to here as if it's still here. Now, is this still here today? I mean, it may not be in your house, but in this country, in this world, has it gone away, right? Balaam's died, but not his not the idolatry, right? Verse 15. Verse 15. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which think, I hate. That's the way you do it. This is Nicolaitans again. I hate those guys. Outlaws, right? 16 says, Repent. Or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Jesus Christ. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna. Who here does not know what manna is? I've never eaten it. Remember the Israelites had no food? I just sprinkled the ground with manna. Substance, life, food, right? And I will give him a white stone. And in that stone, a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. You know that um, you hear a lot about. The, I've, I've read about the stone, the white stone, right? My name being on it. One thought that came to my mind here is when you give your life to the Lord. It don't matter what you're carrying around, or how, what you look like, or what clothes you wear, or what car, or or, or what your uh, testimony sounds like. Only God knows. Your heart. Only. This stone represents the acceptance, the approval of God. Right? Um, and we could go on there. Just think of that, because there are other verses too we could refer to. I seem like there was something I was going to mention to you all. Um, and I had a note. Go ahead. Purity. Purity. Okay, last last church, and you better hold on, cause, huh? They told me give yourself plenty of time. Probably don't use Butch's material. 
<laughs> okay. The message to the church of Thyatira. Here we go. Just around the horn. We're going and we're heading back south. And to the angel of the church in Thyatira write. He says, these things saith the Son of God. This is written in red. It's coming from the Son of God. Jesus refers to himself, right? Who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like the fine brass. They're proven, right? There's nothing here I have to do uh, to make it more obvious. He says, I know thy works and charity, right? Love and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first talking about their works he says notwithstanding i i have a few things against thee here we go because thou sufferest a woman jezebel which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols okay real quick this part of the world thyatira there is in this town it's sort of a what do you say? Female-based, right? Industry of doing, creating dyes and uh, what do you call it? Uh, material, yeah. right? Clothing there material. you go. Hey, a clothing material. Okay. So it's almost as if he's he might even be addressing um, by mentioning Jezebel. He could be mentioning a crowd or a group of people, right? But. Scripture doesn't necessarily say that. I'm going to finish here. Thou servest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Look at what he says. I'll give her time. My son, I'll give him time. Your son. I'll give him time. He has to repent. Right, Jeff? I gave him space. She repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except, except, they repent. Except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. This is Christ. Her children, her followers, her produce, right? And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works. There's a verse there. I got it. Psalms 139, verse 23, 24. Search me, O God. Know my heart. Try me. Know my thoughts. And find if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. Twenty-four. I've got to read. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as ye have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you another burden, but that ye will have already hold fast till I come. Hang on. Hang on. I'm coming. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Right. There'll come a time. You'll see your reward, right? It may not be here. He shall rule them with a rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers. <laughs> Pieces. Even as I received of my father, and I will give him the morning star, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the children, churches. You should read that, those few verses yourself. I went to that way too fast, but that's because we're way too late. And I can only say sorry um, for that. Okay. Eat and run, right? 
You ever do that? Yeah. Eat and run? <laughs> All right. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we're so thankful uh, for uh, you, your uh, salvation, your love, your uh, encouragement, and also your, uh, your warnings, Lord. We fear you. We fear the judgment, Lord, but we know through Jesus Christ we have eternal life. We praise you for all that and ask that in Jesus' name. Amen.